that work is work. I'm very witchy and nerdy, so I'm going to say it one more time to round off the three. Sex work is work. As we work to ask the city and the state to add sex workers to the state and the city human rights law. Now let me, for the people that are like, what is she talking about? It got very legal. It is not a hate crime. Whether you're Jack the Ripper and cut up a transsexual, I mean, cut up a sex worker, or you in the modern day slap dog shit out of a sex worker. Let me get real legal and technical now. If you don't have a visual physical injury and a trick slaps dog shit out of you, it is only harassment. We know that many of the same individuals that get away with the slap, that get away with the kick, when he fights you, when he takes the money off the dresser, when he takes the condom off and rapes you in the middle, we have no rights. So because this movement was founded by two trans sex workers, STAR is going to be demanding that the state and the city add sex workers to the human rights law. It is not often that black and brown trans people have space to gather and feel safe. So we are taking up that space today. Right now. I believe in black and brown trans liberation and that liberation is eternal. All right now, uh-uh. Do y'all really believe that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We matter. And we will not be celebrated once we are gone. We will be celebrated while we are here. We deserve to live. We deserve to take up space wherever we go. We will not be diminished. We will not be made silent. Baby, we are here to take up space. We are here to lead with love because love is our way to liberation. You're standing on the pier where Sylvia Rivera, the founding mother of our movement with Marsha P. Johnson, was living in a shack, homeless. How many of y'all knew that? Raise your hand. A lot of our allies here didn't know that, and yet y'all tokenized her name, Sylvia Rivera and Marsha P. Johnson. Marsha P. Johnson was pulled out of this river a few blocks up north. And so that's why we strategically chose this place. Exactly. One of our demands, by the way, is that we build a monument, a statue of Marsha P. Johnson on this pier. But for those of you who didn't grow up on this pier, I want you to know how historic and sacred this place is. I used to work these streets right behind you once upon a day. You're here today because my good sis, Mariah Lopez and I, in the wee hours of Sunday morning, one of our family members, a black queer person, was savagely killed and stabbed on Jerome Avenue in the Kingsbridge Heights section of the Bronx. And I called Mariah and I said, we have to do something. While the average American lives to about 80 years old, our black and brown trans siblings are living to 35 or less. Thir chew on that. 35 or less. That's a problem. When we're, ha when we're getting attacked from the highest levels of government, from the Trump administration, we have a problem. When one in three black trans women is HIV positive, we have a problem. When black trans women are twice as more likely to live under the federal poverty level, we have a problem on our hands. And let me tell you something else that's happening that I'm seeing on social media. There's this false narrative in the atmosphere that the BLM movement has been hijacked and infiltrated and that it is now all about black trans people. But let me tell you, that is a strategic and coordinated effort to divide us 
so that you all can continue to kill us. They do not want us to be united because they understand the power that we have. And so when folks say all lives matter, we know that all lives cannot matter unless black lives matter. And we know that black lives cannot matter unless black trans lives matter. Keep going. Don't stop believing. Silicone. I have silicone problems and I'm still going. It might look all fabulous, honey, but it ain't all fabulous. When I go home and I got to take the Presidone and the Advil, it's not cute, honey. So we need definitely supporting health care. It's not, it, it's really not, the, it's, I'm telling you. So for the old school girls, I'm, this is who I'm speaking to, you know, the old school generation, because we are going through it with these, with these trying to get um, the surgeries paid and all this and the, the number 45 trying to take us away, you know, and that's it, you know, just, Stay positive and keep going and follow the light. Do not end up in a dark circle, in a dark space. It's very easy to fall in a dark space. Trust me, I've been there. And be careful for the DTs among us. Thank you. This space is very sacred as it already has been mentioned. You know, most of us grew up when we were like really discarded from our neighborhoods. This is the community that we created. And when we came here earlier, there was a bunch of white men and men of other, other, other races and in their privilege on this pier, the pier that belongs to us. And when we started to sit down and sit amongst them, they left. They were they showed you the greatest the greatest example and personification of racism and the gentrification that racism exists. They don't want to be amongst white black people, so they left. These are very 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 trying times for black people especially black trans people, and they need to hear our message. We are in the midst of a public health crisis. They are killing black trans women yeah, at a disproportionate rate. Sorry, I thought you were talking about Corona. <laughs> no, no, not Corona. You know, and, and, and every year, every year, you know, the as a black trans woman, I see the depiction and the misgendering in the media. I see the lack of response and the addressing of the many health disparities and disparities that exist on all levels of life when it pertains to black trans women. And I live those disparities as well. And it's amazing to be amongst the largest group or assembly, I feel, of black trans women who have come to one of these rallies because it's organized by black trans women. So take a tool for all of the people who are organizing rallies. What I want you to do is to start from the inception when you have the thought about creating a rally, contact NITAG, contact STAR, contact BTFA, contact black trans individuals so that we can contribute to the consciousness of this movement as well because we are important and our voices need to be heard. You know, I've spent a lot of my life working to address some of the issues, I guess, that black and brown trans women have faced with these nonprofit organizations, Cal and Lord, GMHC, amongst others, they are not here today and they don't show up. And you people continue to donate your number and donate your money to these organizations. They do not do anything for black trans women. Black trans women are continually dying and they do not show up do not provide us with housing, do not provide us with scholarships. The conditions, the reason why black trans women are dying is not only because these ignorant ass black men, oh, I'm gonna say it, are killing us, it is because of the conditions that we live in. Because after I leave here, I have to go back to East New York okay. with, with all this body. Yes. So I'm constantly harassed. I'm constantly in danger, and this is why black trans people don't want to show up and not out here in the numbers, because we have to be safe. And we've been, for 29 years, I have lived a life of protecting the killers, these men that have been killing us. I have been aiding and abetting their fucking oppression of me, but no more. I will not do it anymore. I will not do it anymore. So these organizations that get funding and donations to support us, 
Supporting us does not only look like creating pamphlets that tell us to stay safe for, against HIV. Supporting us is giving us scholarship. Supporting us is providing us with housing. You see what the Trump administration is doing. They are sending out memos to identify trans women to not allow us to feel comfortable with seeking housing when we are homeless. So what we need to do is we need to donate to black trans organizations that are led by us. We need to donate to black trans individuals. That is doing the work. Stop donating to these organizations because I've worked with them for over a decade and I have seen no success. They actually, the nonprofit industrial complex, complex what it does is they want us to stay in the predicament that we're in so that they can continue to exist. But what we need to not do, not on our dime, not on the lives of, not at the expense of black trans bodies. So we need to stop endorsing them. Black trans women are the epitome of resilience and we will continue to exist. And no matter what the thoughts they continue to do, we will be continue to personify liberation. Thank you so much. Right now, if you've ever, if you ever heard or read or heard stories or watched anything about the civil rights movement, and you thought, damn, if I was there, I would have blank. If you ever heard about the Holocaust, you ever saw someone's marking on their arm that had their number from an internment camp, and you look at what's going on down at the border right now, and you don't say, damn, if I was there, I would have blanked. If you're standing here on these piers, and you hear about the Stonewall riots, and you don't think, damn, if I was there, I would have blanked, you're there. This is your time to fill in the blanks. If I wanted to talk about things we were fighting against today, I would talk about how one in two, one in two, 50% of trans people are sexually assaulted or raped in their lifetime. One in two. Do you see how many trans people are here today? And that's just the ones that report, okay? 20% of trans people have no other choice than to turn to survival sex work because y'all won't hire us. The pain of this movement is not new to trans people. The reason why you see so many of us here is because the pain of this movement we feel every day. It's a protest being a trans person in this society. Okay? We know the world we're fighting against is ugly. As a society, we must actively work to change that. And to do that, we have to keep in mind exactly what it is we're fighting for. I'm fighting for love. I'm fighting for a new world filled, filled to the brim with girls like us. I'm fighting for a world filled with self-made men. My envy babies, I'm fighting for black boy joy and black girl magic. I'm fighting for happiness. I'm fighting for joy. I'm fighting for the drag going on in the Christopher Street Park right now. I'm fighting for good sex and even better music. I'm fighting for healthcare and I'm fighting to get these kids out of the cages. We've seen this before. But let me tell you something. There's two words I just said that I don't necessarily agree with and that's homophobia and transphobia. They ain't scared of us. They're scared to love us because they do. Okay. They're scared to love a black girl that don't look like Zendaya. They're scared to love a strong woman who will not play the housewife game. They're scared to be perceived as gay, and they're scared to be with a woman who the media perceives as a man, glorifying the Maury show and before and after transformations on the news. That's what they're scared of. I'm not here for revenge. I don't want anyone to feel the pain of the death and the rape and the homelessness and the joblessness that the trans community feels. I don't want anyone else to feel that. I want no one on this planet to ever feel that again. I want justice and accountability. We are larger than the crimes that they committed against us. So in closing, we're gonna end this out with a cute little chant about the future that we're working towards, not just the present hell that we live in. So we're gonna chant to the new renaissance, all right? So repeat after me. Our new renaissance, Our new renaissance is, revolution. is revolution. Our sticks and stones, stones are broken down. Are broken down. I'm, talking about I'm talking about an end solution. An end solution. Got, an idea. Got an idea. Let's burn it to the ground.
Helena B. Storm's Mohawk. I want to be the touch of a loving skin of a trans person being reassured that their life is absolutely worth every second. Let none of us go without love. And before you leave here, show a little bit more love. Leave this place with more joy. Leave this place with more fire. But always remember this thunder. Get this dance. For everybody that showed up here on this secret land, that knows somebody, that is a friend to somebody, or that is related to somebody some way, shape, or form, you look at that person and say, I'll make sure you get home safe tonight. Because somebody did not get his home safe on Sunday, Sunday morning. Regardless of what the fuck they were out there doing, they didn't get home safe on Sunday morning. And it 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 it, it really saddens me because it it's like we keep going through this. We keep going through these phases and we think that one day it's all just gonna change. No, it's not gonna change. It will not change until we Burn down the walls of the white supremacy home. The home that they call the White House. The home that Donald Trump occupies. You guys gotta wake up. This, this is what liberation looks like on all levels. On all levels, this is what liberation looks like. And our sibling, Tiffany Dior Harris, who is no longer with us, was also from the Bronx. They were 32 years old. I am 32 years old. They were black. I am black. They love their family and friends. I love my family and friends. <laughs> Tiffany Dior Harris could have easily been me. It is time for us to wake up. It is time for us, especially cisgender people, to protect trans lives. And I'm not just saying share our posts, come to rallies. I'm telling you, check up on your trans siblings. Text them, are you okay today? I love you. Get them food, get them dinner, make sure they're okay. Every time I walk outside of my house, it's a motherfucking protest. Every time I walk out of my house, it is a protest against white supremacy. I am black, I am queer, I am a trans non-binary femme from the fucking Bronx. I had to go out of my way, my life, to go check on and get answers for Tiffany Harris because I didn't see it in the media. She died, she was murdered in my neighborhood, a few blocks away from my house. My ancestors told me, get up and go check on your sibling. My ancestors said, get up and get answers. So that's what the fuck I did. Within 24 hours, I recorded a video of me entering the building where she was murdered. The video went viral. Her family hit me up and said, these are the answers. We didn't know her as Tiffany Harris. We knew her as Dior, who went by multiple pronouns. He, she, they, them, all of them. It shouldn't take for someone from, but not the one they put in the paper. Because Tiffany Dior Harris was more than that. And they didn't do the work. They didn't take the time to respect 
our sibling. So it is time for us to do the work because at the end of the day, we all we got in this fight. We are here for liberation. And we are not gonna get liberation sitting down. So I'm gonna need y'all to get up with me because we are here for liberation. My name is Queen Jean. And I am here today for my trans liberation, black trans liberation. We are warriors because this is not a moment. This is a movement. This is not a moment. This is a movement. Y'all could have been home. Y'all could have been at the park picnicking, sun tanning. Y'all could have even been in entanglement, y'all. <laughs> Message. But we are here today to fight because there is a problem in this country. Black trans people are being killed. It is beginning to feel like a genocide. Every week, three more sisters are killed. Trans men, trans women are killed. That is a problem. And I'm here today because I'm here to fight. But I need all of y'all to fight with me because this is not just a trans problem. This is our problem. We are here today because it is now month two of this war. And it is not easy. But what I am saddened by is that it is now this Friday. Four trans people have been killed this week. Come on. Four trans people have been killed. But yet it is again that we find that their names are not being mentioned. They're not being spoke about. Their names and faces are not in our brain. We need them to be in our bloodstream because they are our family. I am trans and I am liberated. We will no longer accept nothing less than divine. I'm going to say that again. We will expect nothing less than divine. So to the men who are out here, I love to see it because I respect and I treasure, I treasure your support. Because I know it ain't easy. I know y'all homeboys and y'all homies back home be like, yo, man, you at that gay shit? Yeah, nigga, we at this gay shit. Because we are here. as well. So I'm going to need y'all to continue fighting because let me tell y'all something. The homies, the people, the naysayers, our community members, right, who we see in the church, who we see at the bus stop, at the bodega, who will make fun or snicker because y'all are going out here to fight. Let them know that we are here to fight because we are stronger than you. We will always be stronger than you. A black trans woman is stronger than a black man. I'm here to let them know. Because I am not defined by my genitalia. I am not limited by my genitalia. I am empowered. We are not going to wait till our trans siblings are killed for us to give them their roses. We need roses now. Right now. It is imperative that y'all show up. You have to challenge not only yourself, but challenge the people who don't agree with us. People who feel like, oh, this is just something that's gonna go on. We'll be done next week. We ain't done! We are not done, and I am not tired yet. I don't see, I don't think I see too many cisgender men here, and I think that's a problem. I don't see too many cisgender black men here, and I think that's a problem. Shit, I don't see too many black people here at all. I think that's a problem. It's our job to make sure that we are not adding to the divide, that we are accepting everybody as they are, that we are accepting black trans women, that we are accepting black trans men, because they have dealt with enough shit since this country was created. If you think that black trans women gonna do like it was in 1969 and we gonna fight and burn shit down for you cis folks, you got it wrong. We talked about burning it down. So when we burn it down, we gonna burn it down for us this time. And we gonna tell you, hold on a minute. 
We're going to put y'all gangs and lesbians on the ticket next year. We're going to put y'all back on the bills next year. That's what we're going to do like you did us. We are here to claim everything all you devils have stole from us. We are here to claim everything all you devils have stole from us. We ain't asking no more. We're going to take it. So you ask yourself, what does that mean for me? That means for you to go sit with yourself and analyze your own privilege, power, and assets and see what you can do for the trans person in your neighborhood, the trans person in your school. I am starting an initiative on August 1st. And so you can hit me up on Instagram, Goddess Queen Sister. I am starting a whole month of black trans revolutional crowdfunding. I don't care if you're a sex worker, if you're a showgirl, if you are an activist, if you're just a regular girl that needs some coins, hit me up with your picture and a quote and all your cash app information. And I'm going to post it and use my privilege in my network to buy people in my network to pour money into you. Because with that money, you can take your joy. I give you permission to take your joy. I give you permission to take up your space. I give you permission to take back your love. I give you permission to take agency over your life. Don't ever let them let you know that you are unvaluable.